Assassin's Creed Unity was released back in 2014 on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And it was also released on the same day as Assassin's Creed Rogue, which served as an usher into Unity. Unity, on its release, was met with harsh criticism because of the notorious bugs with the state of the franchise, which was becoming more fatigued with yearly releases and burnout from the gameplay. This was considered to be an epic blow to the Assassin's Creed series because Ubisoft took different measures years later to reinvent the series, but Assassin's Creed Unity isn't a bad game in itself. But most players agree that the story isn't as noteworthy as previous entries. The story for some makes it less epic and memorable than others, in which the gameplay of Unity overshadows the story. But let's take a look at the story from another perspective, a film and narrative perspective. Assassin's Creed Unity tells the story of a neo-noir through many of its archetypes of a male protagonist, femme fatale, and its crime. To understand what is neo-noir, we have to understand what is film noir. I killed Dietrichson. Me, Walter Neff, insurance agent, 35 years old, unmarried, no visible scars. Until a while ago, that is. What do you want here? Oh, I'm Sam Spade, Tom Polhouse phone. Oh, I didn't know you at first there, uh, back there. What are you doing that for? What are you honking the horn for? <laughs> Poor dope. He always wanted a pool. Well, in the end, he got himself a pool. Only the price turned out to be a little hot. Film noir is a genre of film that was coined by French film critic Nino Frank. It is called dark film due to the cinematography techniques used filming in black and white with low key lighting. This is given a cinematic version of Cheroscuro, which is where the element of light and dark is shown in high contrast. These films were also made on lower budgets so they could experiment more with its cinematography and its story. As many Hollywood films were censored due to the Hays Code that was enforced through the mid 1930s on to the late 1960s. Film noirs were considered B movies and much of the elements were considered risque at the time since they were crime dramas. Many of these elements included a male protagonist that were either a private eye detective or someone who embody an anti-hero of the story that can go between the underground world of crime, drugs, and other things. There is the femme fatale, which means a disastrous woman. She is sometimes the love interest of the main character or the secret antagonist. Keep in mind the femme fatale from the 1940s has stayed true to the stereotype, but the femme fatale has changed in their roles in noirs throughout the 1950s and the 1970s onwards. This is because the femme fatale in the 40s were a response to men fearing their place in Western society after World War II, and even being a product or a symbol of lust or sex that was banned from the Hays Code. Then there is the crime of the story that usually spins the events or leads a character into an underground scene or a more grandiose scandal that the crime leads into. Other archetypes of film noir take place in a gritty or scandalous city, then usually narration from the main character describing the events to occur or the events as they occur. Movies such as Double Indemnity, Sunset Boulevard, and Touch of Evil are great examples of classical film noirs from the 1940s and 1950s that reflect the paranoia of World War II of the 40s and the questioning of authority and even Hollywood censorship in the 50s. Six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. It's a long hustle, but it keeps me real busy. I can take in three, 350 a week, sometimes even more when I do it off the meter. What? There's no time to be shocked by the truth. The coroner's report proves that he had salt water in his lungs when he was killed. Just take my word for it, all right? Now, I want to know how it happened, and I want to know why, and I want to know before Escobar gets here, because I don't want to lose my license. 
I don't know what you are talking about. I, this is the craziest, the most insane thing. Stop it! Do you like our owl? It's artificial. Of course it is. Must be expensive. Very. I'm Rachel. Deckard. Tracy. What'd you fucking say? It's disturbing how easily a member of the press can purchase information from the men in your precinct. Around the 1970s, when Hollywood movies stopped being censored by the introduction of the rating system that we have today, many movies of old genres prevalent before the Hayes Code enforcement in the mid-1930s, such as crime and gangster films, led to be revitalized. During this time, many films used this new liberation to tell stories that reflected the American society during this time, and with it sprung into a new depiction of film noir. Neo-noirs take on a much more grittier and psychological approach to film noir. They have more or less of the same archetypes of film noir, excluding the black and white cinematography but shows more of a moral dilemma with the main protagonist, more elaborate crimes that lead into bigger schemes, and at times an unhappy ending. New noirs of the 70s reflected the American society of the Watergate scandal and post-Vietnam War with many of its stories showing a distrust with politicians and those who hold power. Films such as Taxi Driver and Chinatown are great examples of this. Neo noirs are still being made to this day, as many films such as Fargo, Seven, Blade Runner, The Dark Knight, and many others are great examples of neo noirs in the past 50 years. In a just world, Victor, I would agree with you, but this is not a just world. This is France. No need to do anything foolish. Let the silversmith go. Stay back. be good what have i done only what you had to but bringing monsieur de la killer to justice would count for something wouldn't it yes it would but do not confuse your personal vendetta with a sound strategy arna dorian is a character most people will compare to Ezio. he is charming has a rebellious personality and cunning the thing with Arno is that in the beginning he is made an orphan due to his father's death. His watch symbolizes the last thing his father has given him before him being murdered at the Palace of Versailles. Arno is then taken in by Francois de la Serre and his daughter Elsie de la Serre. Arno develops a close relationship with Elsie and is raised by Francois as his ward. Arno isn't made to be a hero, nor is he introduced as one. In noirs, many film protagonists aren't introduced as a clean cut or the established good citizen. Most of the time, noir protagonists are just ordinary people who act out as a bridge between the underworld and normal society. In this case, Arnold is an assassin, and their place in this game and in a franchise as a whole reflects a private eye or a detective, as they rely on information to seek out missions and targets against the Templars. It's because of this, Arno uncovers more about the antagonists of the story and those who are pulling the strings of the French Revolution. You seem to have caused quite a commotion. Well, what can I say? You were always a bad influence. Oh, you were a worse one. Nor femme fatales have played different roles throughout the decades, but for the most part, they have always been the driving part that involves the protagonist further into the plot. Do you know me? Well, uh, I think I would have remembered. Uh, have we ever met? Well, no. What are you talking about? You, you walk out with those fucking creeps and lowlifes and degenerates out on the street and you sell your, sell your little pussy for nothing, man? For some lowlife pimp? You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. I am big. It's the picture that got small. But Elise, Arnold, is in love with her, and he risks sneaking into a party to meet her. 
She is what spins Arnold's story upside down. Even though isn't at fault for this, but their love situation is what makes her the femme fatale as she is a catalyst for Arnold. She is also a Templar as well, and in which Arnold is an assassin by lineage. Another point of adding that makes Elsie the femme fatale is her death. Elise dies because her heart yearned for revenge for her father's death. If you don't have the stomach for revenge, then I don't need your help. Elise. Elise! She used Arnold as her sword, even though he has warned her countless times to be careful. Her death causes Arnold to become depressed and hopeless as he couldn't save her from the man that killed her father. You're right, monsieur. Too much of the king's champagne. Monsieur. Monsieur de la Serre. Monsieur de la Serre. Sivir, come away. Guards, help. Murder. The meat and potatoes of the noir films is crime. They are crime dramas and they are often what spins everything. The crime in Unity brings us into the underworld that the public doesn't see, and that is the Assassins and Templar War. Della says murder is what introduced us to the war between the two factions, because Arnold is framed for it, and from this, he is now thrown into prison and is given the opportunity to learn who he really is. By learning of his true roots, he joins the Brotherhood to find out who murdered Delacere, in which the crime will show a far more deeper plan along with who was pulling the strings to the French Revolution. There are many examples of big crime schemes and stories like these. Oh, that's all taken care of. See, Mr. Gibbs, either you bring the water to L.A. or you bring L.A. to the water. How are you going to do that? By incorporating the valley into the city. Simple as that. How much are you worth? I have no idea. How much do you want? No, I just want to know what you're worth. Over 10 million? Oh, my, yes. Why are you doing it? How much better can you eat? What can you buy that you can't already afford? The future, Mr. Gitz. The future. Mr. Stanley, you killed Pete. The bullet is from your gun. You think anyone would believe that? They always believe me. Anyway, I never believe I killed him. A gun? You're resisting arrest. How could you arrest me here? This is my country. This is where you're going to die. That wasn't no miss, Vargas. I was just to turn you around. I don't want to shoot you in the back. Unless you'd rather try to run for it. The train is higher than ever, Grandmaster. Our agents are in place to divert the shipments to our docks. They await only your command. Ooh. Starve them. Through famine and fury, they will see their false masters for what they are, but do it gradually. What you're asking will take at least a year, Grandmaster. If not two. Kings. Merely a symbol. A symbol can inspire fear. And fear can inspire control. But men inevitably lose their fear of symbols, as you can see. This was the truth to Malay died for. Oh. You were there for its conception. Monsieur de la Serre. Uh, tried to make him see. But the order had become corrupt, touching at power and privilege for their own sake. The central villain in Unity is Francois Germain, who did in fact orchestrate Delacere's murder. He also was controlling the French Revolution to kill King Louis XVI. Germain does so by recruiting many members of the Templar Order who was disenfranchised by Francois Delacere. He used the hardships of the poor and wielded their anger for his benefit. For Germain, his intention was to challenge or even take away the idea of divine kings and symbols and having his accomplices defame the king so he can die as a criminal and a hated figure. The true motive 
of this was centuries of planning since Jama to the story was a sage. Jama makes a lot of mentions of how kings and symbols gave humans a, a false sense of order. To him, the true order isn't with kings or queens, but it is the Templars who will find the true order. After analyzing many of the archetypes of a protagonist, the femme fatale, and the crime, I believe that Assassin's Creed Unity is a neo-noir, if nevertheless a film noir in its narrative. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be in tune for the next one. Thank you.